evening. So glad to have you join us tonight as we begin a study and looking into God's Word. Man, God's Word is so awesome. I compare it to like peeling off onions, you know. You peel off a layer, uh, a layer and you get another layer that's a little bit sweeter, a little bit uh, stronger. And so that's the way studying the Word is. And today we're going to delve into something kind of interesting, or at least to me. Hope it will be to you as well. And we want to talk about that, but let's have a word of prayer before we get started. Let's go to pray. Holy Father, we thank you for your goodness, your mercy, your grace. We thank you for your power. And God, we need your power. We do not need it personally to be able to do things, but we need your power to work through us so that you can do with what only you can do. We pray for the sick. We pray for the discouraged. We pray for the lonely. We pray, Lord, for that one that's this down and out. We pray, Lord, for financial needs and physical needs. And we ask you to show yourself mighty tonight. Minister to them as we look into your word and as we go through the airways. And we ask you, Lord, just to touch people's hearts and lives. Give us understanding today. And we'll thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. And amen. Well, today I want to start off with the book of Ecclesiastes. I know we don't preach too much out of Ecclesiastes, but there's an interesting verse in chapter 4, verse 13. It says, Better was a poor and wise youth than an old and foolish king who no longer knew how to take advice. The NIV puts it this way Better a poor but wise youth than an old but foolish king who no longer knows how to take a warning. The King James Version says someone that to be admonished. That word a warning or to, uh, to be admonished literally means to be admonished, instructioned, instructed or warned. Admonished, instructed or warned. The chap that chapter of Ecclesiastes gives some great, great advice. It is a very foolish person who refuses to accept instruction. Someone who refuses to accept advice. Now I realize that free advice is usually worth what you pay for it. It's free. But we also know that there's some godly advice and it's we need to listen to godly counsel and godly advice. And also we need to learn to heed warnings. The Bible is full of warnings, full of warnings, not threats, but warnings, warnings of what happens when we refuse to listen, when we refuse to accept advice. And when we fail to read the instructions, now the Bible is our instruction book, but I think we can go to other types of instructions and realize what we're talking about. If you've ever tried to put together some simple thing, it says easy instructions. Well, if you've ever tried to put years ago, try to put up a shed with some of those instructions. If you did not read the instructions carefully, you were in a mess. And I can tell you that a lot of times in life, when we fail to read the instructions, we get in trouble. When we he uh, stopped listening to advice when we quit learning from our mistakes when we stop heeding warnings then we are in trouble now today i want us to talk about heeding the warnings or responding to the warnings now there's a great example in the book of first samuel first samuel chapter uh, 8 Verse 9, notice what it says. Chapter 8, verse 9. Now then, obey their voice, only you shall solemnly warn them and show them the ways of the king who shall reign over them. See, the people said, we want a king. We want to be like everybody else. 
And God says, okay, you do what they're asking. Give them what they ask. And I think very, very often God allows us to get what we ask for. And we realize right after then, why did I ask for that? But it says, show them the ways of the king and warn them of the ways of the king who shall reign over them. It goes on to say this. So Samuel told all the words of the Lord to the people who were asking for a king from him. He said, these will be the ways of the king who will reign over you. He will take your sons and appoint them to his chariots and be his horsemen and to run before his chariots. And he will appoint for himself commanders of thousands and commanders of fifties and some to plow his ground and reap his harvest and to make his implements of war and the equipment of his chariots. He will take your daughters to be perfumers and cooks and bakers. He will take the best of your fields and appointed that you might eat with the guests. Excuse me, I turned the wrong page there. Take the pace of your fields and vineyards and olive orchards and give them to his servants. He will take the tenth of your grain and of your vineyards and give it to his officers and to his servants. He will take your male servants and your female servants and the best of your young men and your donkeys and put them to his work. He will take the tenth of your flocks and in the and you shall be his slaves. And in that day you cry out because of your king whom you have chosen for yourselves, but the Lord will not answer that day. He said, if you, you can have a king, but when you get a king, you need to realize that he's going to uh, draft people for his army. He's going to recruit people for his army. He's going to recruit people to work into his fields. He's going to recruit ladies to do this, ladies to do that, and that you're going to have to pay taxes. Man, just think, what if they'd listened to God and if they heeded his warnings, would Israel ever have to pay taxes? No, I think we understand history would have been changed if they would have just heeded his warnings, if they would have only listened, if they had followed instructions, if they had heeded the warnings, history would have been changed. But instead, let's look over a couple of chapters to chapter 15, verse 10. The word of the Lord came to Samuel. I regret that I have made Saul king. For he has turned back from follow me. He hasn't listened to instructions either. He didn't follow directions either. He didn't heed warnings either. He has not performed my commands. And Samuel was angry and he cried to the Lord all night. And Samuel rose and he, Samuel was angry and he cried to the Lord all night. So we see the results of failing, failing to heed the warnings. Failing to heed the warnings. Now, there's a word that I hear quite a bit in our society today, especially in the political arena. And that word is conspiracy. There are so many conspiracy theories. And I realize there's probably an element of truth in many of them, but I'm sure some of them are probably not. But the word conspiracy comes from a Latin word which means to plot. It literally means to plot or to plan an agreement for an unlawful or harmful purpose. Conspiracies. All kinds of conspiracies being talked about. Well, let's go over to the book of Isaiah. And I know we recently concluded a study, but let's go back to chapter 8 of Isaiah and just read a few verses. Now, uh, start out with uh, two verses chapter 8 verse 11 and 12 for the Lord spoke thus to me with a strong hand upon me and warned me not to walk in the way of this people saying do not call conspiracy all that this people calls conspiracy and do not fear what they fear nor be in dread I think I could bring that to current days and tell you that if we get chasing after all the conspiracy theories, 
Again, I know there's some out there. Some of them may be beyond theories. They may be fact. But if we start chasing all those things, if we start worrying about those things, then friends, we're going to worry ourselves sick. We're going to worry ourselves sick because there's so many things that we can be concerned about. And God tells us that we need to trust in God. Well, what brought that warning on? See, God warned Isaiah. What brought the uh, warning on? Well, there were those that were giving out false prophecies. And they were sharing things that people wanted to hear. They were saying, everything is good. Everything's going to be all right. Because God is with us. You know, that sounds great. It sounds great. And many people today are quick to jump on board and say, don't listen to the naysayers. Don't listen to those that are giving godly advice. Don't listen to those that are giving warnings, danger ahead. Listen to those that are giving out the good news. I could go on and on in that line. But we need to understand that God gives us warnings throughout the book. 2 Timothy brings it current. Listen to what it says in 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 1. Paul told his son in the faith, I charge you in the presence of God and of Christ Jesus, who is to judge the living and the dead, and by his appearing and his kingdom. Preach the word. Be ready in season and out of season. Reprove, rebuke, and exhort with complete patience and teaching. That's a great exhortation. He said, Timothy, this is what I want you to do. I want you to teach the word, preach the word, live the word. But then it says, verse 3, for the time is coming when people will not endure sound teaching. But will have itching ears. They will accumulate for themselves teachers to suit their own passions and will turn away from listening to the truth and wander off into myths. I see this happening today. I see it happening in our society. Most of you know me. If you listen to me very often, you know I'm a very positive person. I like to preach on positive things. I like to tell you that God is in control. I like to tell you to let's walk in faith, not in fear. But the reality is that God is giving the church warnings. Just like he gave the nation of Israel warnings. Just like he's always throughout history given warnings. He said, be aware, be aware. Don't do this because if you do, this is going to happen. But if you don't listen to the admonition, if you do not listen to the teachings, if you do not pay attention to the warnings, then guess what? We're going to have some difficulty. And in the last days that people are wanting to hear what they want to hear. They want me to tell you that you don't have to worry about difficult times because as a Christian, you'll never have difficult times. Now, friend, if you took that and sliced it up, took it out of context. You could tell people that Pastor Strickland said Christians never have difficult times. But that is not the truth. There are places in the world today that are going through terrible, terrible situations. And they are more godly than many of us are. So just because we're a Christian does not mean that we are immune to difficult times. We need to put our faith and trust in God. Now let's go back over to Isaiah Back to that passage that we were looking in, in Isaiah. We read uh, chapters uh, 11, of verses 11. But let's go back up to verse 9. Be broken, you peoples, and be shattered. Give ear, all you far countries. Strap on your armor and be shattered. Take counsel together, but it will come to nothing. Speak a word, but will not stand, for God 
is with us. See, that was the message that Isaiah was warning the people about. Because there were those that saying everything is good. Isaiah was trying to say there's a bridge out ahead. There's a start, sharp curve. There's a drop off. Be on alert. Be watching. And these others were saying, hey, you just put the metal to the pe pedal to the metal because there's nothing ahead but smooth sailing. And we know what happened. We know that terrible things happened. Let's go back to reading verse 11. For the word Lord spoke thus to me with a strong hand upon me and warned me not to walk in the way of this people, saying, Do not call conspiracy all that the people cause conspiracy, and do not fear what they fear, nor be in dread. But the Lord of hosts you shall honor as holy. Let him be your fear, and let him be your dread. And he will become a sanctuary and a stone of offense and a rock of stumbling to both houses of Israel, a trap and a snare to the inhabitants of Jerusalem. And many shall stumble on it and they shall fall and be broken and they shall be snared and taken. Now, I think all of us realize and understand that the gospel literally means the good news. The good news. Jesus is good news. Jesus is good news. He said, go into all the world and spread the good news. But what's he talking about that stone? Well, if you've read the Bible very much, you know that Jesus is called the stone that the builders rejected. The stone that his builders rejected. Listen to what Jesus said said that he gave a warning in the good news where he says in the gospel of Luke chapter 20 verse 17 what then is this that is written the stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone man that's great news the stone that the builders rejected who is that stone that stone of course was the Lord Jesus Christ he is the rock that we need to build our lives on but if you reject that stone, you don't build on him. And the Bible says this foolish man that builds his house upon the sand. But the wise man builds his house upon the rock, the Lord Jesus Christ. And it goes on to say in Luke, it says this, Everyone who falls on that stone will be broken to pieces. And when it falls on anyone, it will crush him. Now what in the world? See, when we fall on the stone, that means we do that willingly. We stumble or we cast ourselves on that rock. And yes, it, it uh, causes us to break away self and we become a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ. And he said, you need to listen to this warning. And this is as strong a warning as I can give you today. The Bible tells us there will come a time when every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Everyone, even Satan, will have to say Jesus Christ is Lord. But all the way through the Bible, and we here in the United States, most of us have been so privileged to have access to the Bible all of our lives. And it tells us that Jesus loves us and if we receive him, if we accept him, then we cast ourselves on that stone. But if we reject him, there's a warning. It says it's a terrible thing to fall into the hands of an angry God. And God is angry when we resist the love that he gave us. The love that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. So a warning, a warning says, listen, without that gift, you're going to die. Because the Bible says appointed for man wants to die. Wants to die. And that all of us has sinned and come short of the glory of God. But as many as received him, as many have fallen on that rock, as many have accepted him, as many that have ex uh, accepted that teaching, received that warning, read the instructions, then we shall have eternal life. So friends, 
I urge you as strongly as I can urge you today. If you've not asked Jesus Christ for forgiveness, to do so today, because there will come a time that you can't fall on the stone. It's going to fall on you, and you will be destroyed. A strong warning. Can I ask you to heed it? Can I ask you to listen to it? Can I ask you to accept instruction and listen to the advice from this old man? Jesus loves you. This I know, for the Bible tells me so. Let me pray with you and pray for you. Father, we thank you for your goodness. And once again, we thank you for your grace. God, we do not deserve your love. We do not deserve your forgiveness. But thankfully, we can receive it. And Father, we want to heed your word. We want to read your instructions. We want to hear your guidance. We want to hear you speak and say, here's my way, walk in it. And help us to be submissive to you and yielded to you. And God will thank you for it and give you praise for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for watching tonight. Lord bless you. You have a great week and we'll see you next week.